Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about my bullet journal that I'm using for work and what it's like four months in. Uh, first of all, before we get started, talk a little bit about this pen because I get lots of questions. It's a Pentel Energel. I think it's a philography or philosophy, something like that. I'll link it down below. I actually got it from Jet Pens. It uses the Energel refills and I actually really love this pen. Uh, I think I have a 0.5 or maybe a 0.4. Anyway, I'll link it down below in case you're curious. Not much has changed in the front. Obviously with the bullet journals, you just keep adding on to it. So I have my key the list key for the strike through list that I have in the back, an index which I obviously haven't updated since April. So first I had my 2018 page. I did start in February, but I put in a future log and you'll see I put little tabs up at the top. I believe I cut these down. I think they were two or three in width and I just cut them into thirds and used them with a permanent pen so it wouldn't smear. So in the beginning of a future log, which is trips I'm taking, meetings I have that are kind of standard, the top section's all work related and the bottom section is all things that are more of a personal nature, but they're things that actually affect my work schedule. So that's why I included those in here. In the second half of the year for my future log, I have an annual strategy, which actually hasn't been updated since I first put this in here. Again, these were things that were kind of affecting my general schedule. Actually, I guess I have updated a few things because I added a few trips last month and this month, but I'm keeping track of when insurance policies renew for our company. Trips in August, I don't have apartment association responsibilities for the most part, so I made a note of that. For a change, that adds time instead of taking it away. I have kind of a master list that I started for the onboarding project that I'm working on. This is kind of a year long project. I'm overhauling everything from our interview guides and job descriptions all the way through manuals and things like that. So still working through that. I'm finishing up the last of the interview packets and job descriptions still. I'll show you a little bit later where I'm keeping track of that part of it. I have a month at a glance. Pretty much draw in the month, keep track of trips and things like that. You'll see this has changed slightly, um, but not too much. I usually have kind of a monthly to-do list over here. And then it goes into daily pages. So this is just kind of where I'm keeping track of what's going on day to day. I played a little bit with doing things different than then I kind of settled on this format. Here's March. I have a spot for a to-do list. I didn't actually write anything in there. I had a spot for travel plans for the month. And again, just a general overview of what was going on during that time frame. March is also the month where I combined the Momentum Planner information into my bullet journal. So rather than having to flip back and forth between two different planners, I have it kind of in one place. So I have quarterly objectives, monthly objectives, projects as they're coming up, and then I have the different things broken down by week. So this is what I was referring to, uh, where I'm keeping track of all the interview guides that I'm redoing. So I have the job title over here on the right, and then I have a column for each of the different sections. Not all of them have tests associated, so that's why there aren't many check marks. But as I'm going across, I can check off as I'm doing each portion, so I make sure I don't forget anything. Again, we go back into the dailies and we hit April. So again, April, I made a note that I was on call that month, back up on call for our emergency line at work, had my travel plans, again, daily information, daily pages again, a note for our legislative trip, things I needed to remember, like we were gonna be wearing a similar color on one day and it was supposed to rain the entire time we were there, although it didn't. Now, you'll notice that I have a couple of pages in the middle here before I hit the April information and that's because I completely forgot I was going to put it in. I think I actually did a plan with me for this month and if you look you can actually watch me forget that I was going to put one of these in. So um, this is April's again quarterly objectives, monthly objectives, emerging projects, and then having everything broken down by week. More daily pages and then we hit May. So this is where we are right now. Um, today is the 16th. So on this next page, again, May project planning, the layout taken from the Momentum Planner, same information, same setup, and then more dailies. And yeah, 
Um, so I did leave this next page blank because you saw the first month I used it as a checklist. So I figured rather than starting a new page here and then splitting a week up, because pretty much I can do it one week in two different pages. So like this one, I have Monday, Tuesday here. It extends a little bit on this side, Thursday, Friday there. Um, Monday, Tuesday, and then I have room for Thursday, Friday. So that way, kind of I'm keeping my weeks together as much as possible. Now here in the back, if you watched my video on project tracking, this is working somewhat when I check it. <laughs> Let's just be honest. So I eventually will probably put this in here. I have not yet just because I've been traveling a lot recently and yeah, I'm, I have been trying to kind of get myself back into the groove of everything of life right now. So this is working as much as I'm using a project tracking checklist. So I do have back here in the back, the little notebook that I make notes in, but I also have my weekly review checklist. So I have review projects for next actions. I'm, I'm half-assing this work weekly review. Let's, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. Um, I get through it, but it doesn't get done all the time, on time, every single week. So anyway, eventually this will probably make it into a permanent page, but for right now I just keep it folded and tucked in here. So these are my strike through lists. If you hadn't watched my previous video, this is basically all of my to-do lists broken down into somewhat of a context, more of by project than an actual context as per David Allen, where he talks about it being like computer at home at work, um, errands, that sort of thing. So I have onboarding project to-dos. These aren't all of them, but they're, it's a place for me to put them as I think of them. I have work tasks, which has kind of gotten a little strange because I have this page, this page, and then I kind of ran out of room. So I started using some threading and I don't know if you can see this, but I have the, the current page number as it was printed. Going forward, I have a little arrow. So from here, the next, it continues on 232. Um, going back, it's on page 233. So that kind of tells me as I start to skip around a little bit what page I need to look for. So we have front, back, and then it skips back a page. So once I get done with this, I don't know where I'll go. I'll go someplace else, but I'll reference it in the thread. So I have a spot for the Google Forms that I want to work on. Updates I need to make on onsite.com, which is our leasing software. Um, my waiting for list my agenda items, things I need to talk to people about, which actually I can cross this off. And this one. And that one. Hey, I feel better already. <laughs> okay. I have a someday maybe list, which has one item on it. Yeah, I don't use a list all that often. It was just a place for me to keep that where I didn't, it's nothing I'm acting on right now and I didn't know where else to put it. And then the very last page is just a list of my reoccurring tasks. And for the monthly, what day of the month I do it on. For quarterly, if it has a day associated. Weekly, which day of the week. Bi-weekly, which day of the week. And then annually, what month. So that's how I have that back portion set up. Now how these are referenced and this is just the very basics of the strike through method, is the page number dot and then the item number. So let me, because I know I worked on a few things this week. So this is 232.75, page 232, item 75. Now when I have completed the item, I will draw a line through it here, even though I check it off. I draw a line knowing that ref lets me know I've crossed it off back here as well. And then I just draw a line through the whole task. So. I've gotten quite a bit of my work tasks done. There's still a few things that are kind of hanging out that I need to work on, but I'll get to them at some point. Um, if I have a due date, initially, I was kind of writing it sort of over in this column, but it was getting hard to see. So I'm gonna start putting it, indenting things a little bit more, and then I can put a due date here. And then in the far right, it's either EM, a P, um, or a reference to a file. So usually I had email, EM, P for paper, and now I added RR for read review because I have a read review file, and that way I know kind of where it ended up. Because otherwise I know where my emails that are pending are, I know where my paper that's pending is, but now if I'm putting it into a specific folder, I'll know that's where it is. So that's my bullet journal right now, and I actually am really enjoying this. It's fitting the reasons that I actually started this in the first place 
instead of being inside of a daily page. One, I have as much space as I need to use, either a little bit or a lot. If I have a busy day, or as I'm trying to do lately, I'm trying to track what it is that I'm doing. So even if it wasn't something that's originally on my list, I have it written down and checked off. I have a spot where everything's all together. So voicemail messages are there, records of phone calls are there. So it's all in one place and I have as much room as I need to write things down. Before I was running out of room, everything was divided up on the Coco Daisy sheets that I was using before. And so I would be like, I don't know where to put this. I have too much room in notes and not enough room in to-dos, not enough room in appointments so this way it's all there quick notes on how I set up the daily stuff. Usually I start with the little triangle with a line underneath it so I start off with my appointments and then I will write down the to-dos that I need to do. So if I don't have any appointments I just launch straight into the to-dos. If I'm doing voicemail message or notes or anything like that I just put a little dot a bullet point so that way I know it's not something I need to do anything with it's just me referencing a bit of information that I wanted to write down for whatever reason so that's how the dailies are set up now as far as this goes I have items that are things I need to work on like mini sub projects or tasks that are related to projects that I've broken down those are listed here with the squares again letting me know it's a to do I use a bullet point if it's a an appointment or like a trip that I'm going to be on so I know that I'm out of town that week and I can factor that in sometimes with these emergent projects if I decide I'm working on something back here like the on-site lease changes um, I'll reference that page number just so I know kind of okay I'm getting ready to work on this where where's the list of everything okay it's right here so that way I know where everything is so hopefully that's helpful in seeing how I have everything set up and how I'm using it pretty much I'm setting things up either first thing in the morning which I try not to do um, but like today I haven't set anything up yet or last night I didn't set anything up for the next day so we'll be doing it first thing in the morning I try and do it the night before kind of as I'm wrapping up work that way I'm looking back and saying okay what didn't I do so that I can actually pull that forward to the next day and not lose things that didn't get done. If they don't get done, I'm writing in a little arrow so I know that things got forwarded to a different day that I didn't get them completed then. I will admit sometimes I'm lazy and don't want to rewrite things so I will just scan back and look for things that are open and work on those. If I know I'm going to have a particularly busy day and I don't want to spend a bunch of time rewriting, sometimes I will do that. But most of the time I try and bring them forward. But I don't actually put an arrow in them until I have brought them forward so that way they don't get lost. Worst case scenario, in the weekly review I'm checking for incomplete tasks and moving them to the work list. So if I didn't get them done, I didn't get them forwarded, they're going to be forwarded into the master list. I'm also processing my email at that point in time because I have a process folder. If you're interested in how I process my email, I'll actually link that video down below so you can see how it is that I handle it. But I do keep my inbox clean and move everything into a process folder once I've read it, if it's not something I can take care of right away. Uh, I then process my physical inbox. I check this booklet to make sure I haven't written anything down that needs to be brought forward. I sync my monthly calendar, so I'm flipping back to this page and making sure that everything that's coming up for the rest of the month is still accurate. I'm reviewing goals and weekly assignments that break down, so that is this page here just reviewing to see is there anything, especially as I get toward the end of the week, is there anything I need to work on that I haven't actually brought forward and worked on yet? So sometimes it'd be like this week, the Mondayest Monday and Mondayest Tuesday I've had in a while. We have a lot of people that are out of the office right now and so I'm doing jobs that I don't normally do, things that I haven't done in probably five or seven years and so I'm struggling to remember what exactly the policies and procedures are for those things. So it's been a challenge. So yeah, like this sort of week, I got a few of the job packets worked on yesterday, but I didn't get anything done on Monday. And that was when I was hoping to work on them. So once I've reviewed that, I'm then reviewing my projects, which is on this page here, checking to see where are we? Have I completed this task? If I have, what's the next action after that? So that I can start working on those. And then just reviewing the list and crossing off what has been completed. Because a lot of times I'm moving so fast, I'll actually get something done. I'll bring something forward or not bring it forward and just be like, oh, I need to do this and not realize that it's back here. 
So that's my chance to kind of read through and be like, oh, hey, I finished that. Oh, look, I finished that too. And so that way I can just cross them off and not have to worry about the fact that they're still open when they're not actually open. So anyway, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions about my work bullet journal or if there's anything that you would be interested in seeing about it, you will notice I have blurred a lot of things out because I do know that there are people at my company that watch these videos and there are some things since I am in HR that are confidential. So I make sure that I keep a lot of that information private. I know sometimes I get requests, why can't we see what, what you're writing? Well, first of all, it probably doesn't apply to your job because there's not many people who do what I do <laughs> for a property management company out in the grand world, but knowing how I do them, I think is more important than knowing what I do. If there's anything else that you're interested in seeing or knowing how I handle it, I would definitely be happy to tell you. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe down below. I do apologize that these videos have um, been a little late lately. I haven't recorded as much as I could because I was at Go Wild for about half of a week and around that. So the few days before and the week after I was sick. So I have just gotten to the point where I have at least a little bit of energy to be able to spend. Trust me, I enjoy recording these videos, but when I don't have the energy or the brain power to put two sentences together that make sense, I figured I would hold off until I was feeling better. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!